Good evening, everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. Now, I want to talk about the last video that I did here. Apparently, it caused a little bit of uh, controversy here. It was addressed on Let's Talk Bitcoin, a show that I love, uh, people that I highly respect. I just uh, maybe happen to disagree with them a little bit on this issue. So the big issue is going to be my statement that uh, I feel that uh, Bitcoin is not a democracy. It's a market and uh, therefore one CPU, one vote is, uh, and I said allegedly that Satoshi said that I hadn't addressed whether it was actually in the white paper, but uh, that the idea of a Bitcoin democracy is in my mind a stupid idea. It's much better to have a market, not just for the price of the Bitcoin, but for the hardware that's used for mining. So let's look at the white paper and see what Satoshi actually said. This is the Bitcoin white paper from Bitcoin.org. And this is the uh, key paragraph here. And what he said is, the proof of work also solves the problem of determining representation in majority decision making. If the majority were based on one IP address, one vote, it could be subverted by anyone able to allocate many IPs. Proof of work is essentially one CPU, one vote. The majority decision is represented by the longest chain which has the greatest proof of work effort invested in it. If a majority of CPU power is controlled by honest nodes, the honest chain will grow the fastest and outpace any competing chains. So when you look at this carefully, it's a little bit ambiguous. First, essentially one CPU, one vote. So it's built in there that this is just an analogous idea. It isn't one CPU, one vote. It is essentially one CPU, one vote. And the key issue is going to be CPU power. So as I said, a much more powerful CPU is going to have more votes or nodes with more powerful CPUs are going to have more votes by definition. Now, if you just think it through in a uh, a logical manner of uh, an example if I took this machine that I've got right here this is an i7 and uh, I've set it to in your windows you can set your task manager to view your CPU history you can see I can graph all CPUs or I can graph one graph per CPU so you can see that this machine, this i7 I'm on, has eight CPUs. Now, that's very important because it's going to get to the core issue of, I think it's really just a misunderstanding of what a CPU is, what a GPU is, and what an ASIC is. So what we're really talking about here is processing power. Uh, one CPU, which let's say it's an ASIC and I'll show you here how an ASIC is essentially a CPU. One CPU that's a thousand times powerful, more powerful than these eight is going to have more votes um, because it's going to be more successful in hashing power and therefore it's more likely to solve and be rewarded bitcoins. Now of course even an ASIC that's a thousand times faster is still going to have to be in a mining pool simply because there are so many miners that uh, they'd be unlikely to get a reward on their own. But if we're talking about just the CPU level right now, and we just mined with one CPU, I could fire up an old Bitcoin client with the mining in it and just let it run and run and run. It'd probably run for years and never get any rewards. That's just the nature of the market and how far it's moved. So I don't think the original vision by Satoshi was to be a democracy. It's just an example that he's talking about of how uh, distributed honest nodes uh, will hopefully be able to overpower dishonest nodes. Now, of course, if it were one CPU, one vote, and it's addressed here with the issue of IP addresses, obviously someone could 
buy up a, a slash eight of IP addresses and uh, control an enormous number of IP addresses, well, they also could buy up a tremendous number of CPUs. And that's actually what we're talking about anyway, because a lot of this is just ignorance of what these things are. So let's start off and look at what is a CPU. A CPU is just a central processing unit. That's essentially your personal computer's brain. It's the main brain. A central processing unit is also referred to as central processor unit is the hardware within a computer that carries out the instructions of a computer program by performing basic arithmetical logical input output operations of the system. The term has been in use in the computer industry since the early 1960s. The form design and implementation of CPUs has changed over the course of their history, but their fundamental operation remains much the same. A computer can have more than one CPU. This is called multiprocessing. Some integrated circuits can contain multiple CPUs on a single chip. Those ICs are called multi-core multi processors. So we want to look at the GPU to understand why the GPU took over from the CPU. The GPU is actually a CPU. That's the first thing we need to understand. It's nothing but a CPU that's uh, designed to process graphics. These came about because of gaming and the fact that a lot of the processes that were done by the processor uh, were interfering with the, the rendering of the visual uh, the graphics. So it was beneficial to have a separate processor that just simply rendered those gaming, uh, very, very uh, complex uh, gaming mathematical calculations to show you those uh, game visuals that you all know and love. So a graphics processing unit, GPU, is also occasionally called a visual processing unit, VPU, is a specialized electronic circuit designed to rapidly manipulate and alter memory to accelerate the creation of images in a frame buffer intended for output display. GPUs use an embedded systems, mobiles, etc. Modern GPUs are efficient at manipulating computer graphics and their highly parallel structure makes them more efficient than general purpose CPUs for algorithms where processing of large blocks of data is done in parallel. So a GPU is a CPU. It's just a graphics CPU. Now, we're going to find the same thing when we look at ASICs. You just have to remember that it was just a function of the fact that the particular hash that was chosen for the Bitcoin, which was SHA-256, happened to be uh, much more efficiently processed by the GPU. Now, when the GPUs first came online, uh, they blew the CPUs out of the water, and the same fear that we're seeing about ASICs actually occurred back then, and uh, it didn't amount to any kind of disaster. So let's look at the ASIC to understand what that is. An ASIC is an application-specific integrated circuit. So what's unique about the ASICs this time around for Bitcoin is we actually have an application, the Bitcoin client, Bitcoin mining, that's the application specifically that this integrated circuit is designed for. That's why there's such a jump in power. An application specific integrated circuit or ASIC customized for a particular use rather than intended for general purpose use. For example, a chip designed to run in digital voice recorder is an ASIC. Uh, ASICs in the industry standard integrated circuits like the 7400. As feature sizes have shrunk and design tools improved over the years, the maximum complexity and hence functionality possible in an ASIC has grown from 5,000 gates to over 100 million. Modern ASICs often include entire microprocessors, memory blocks, including ROM, RAM, EEPROM, e e flash and other large building blocks such an asic is often named SOC system on chip so you can see that and this this picture here this is a tray of asics so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the bitcoin 
I'm sorry, the ASIC miners for the Bitcoin. These are basically a whole bunch of CPUs that are very, very fast, designed to do that hashing function uh, that uh, puts them orders of magnitude more efficient than what came before. So really, the ASIC is just another evolutionary growth in the hashing power of Bitcoin mining machines. Obviously, if the CPU uh, were the fastest thing around to mine Bitcoins, then people would still be using that. It just so happens that people discovered that their gaming GPUs, which is also a CPU, was much more efficient at the hashing function. That's because of the mathematical calculations required to render those uh, video graphics in the games. But obviously, seeing that and seeing the profit motive available in the free market by creating a better CPU than the GPU is why we ended up with these ASICs. So the issue is not one CPU, one vote. The issue is processing power and who controls the processing power. So in my opinion, it's a good thing for processing power to grow, especially for processing power to be available in a decentralized way. And of course, the free market incentive to begin to use ASICs is the profit incentive of gaining Bitcoins by doing so. Now, as I addressed before, the distribution of the ASIC technology, I expect to happen very, very rapidly as uh, we see them coming on and used, used as miners before they're distributed. That's only going to last as long as the competition, which again is the free market, does not come online with the same technology. And there's no reason to think that that technology will not be developed. It's uh, something analogous to the nuclear technology. Uh, we, we've spent many, many decades trying to prevent the spread of nuclear technology, and that's downright stupid. We know that the United States developed that in the 1940s, so obviously any modern country in the world can develop that technology. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the plutonium, etc. So same issue with the ASIC. If one guy can come up with an ASIC that can solve these math functions very, very much more efficient than the GPUs, then obviously another person can come up with an ASIC and they're going to have to start shipping and they're going to have to start selling. And you're going to see the ASICs distributed through the mining network as you saw the GPUs distributed through the mining network. Uh, I have a machine that uh, is now virtually obsolete that has three, uh, I believe it's 76, I don't remember the uh, number on it, but uh, they were very, very high-end 7900 series. I think they mined at eight giga hashes, uh, or I can't remember the number, eight mega hashes perhaps. Anyway, the machine is obsolete now. It's a, a machine with three very high-end GPUs and it's been rendered into just an old gaming machine again because of the ASIC. And that is a very positive development because it's the free market moving forward. Again, there's a free market in the Bitcoin price and there's a free market in the Bitcoin technology. And all of this is good. Uh, it's the furthest thing from a democracy. It is a free market. And we'll talk to you next time.